August 11th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Philippians Chapter 3 from the New Testament Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write this again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, the ones who worship by the Spirit of God, exult in Christ Jesus, and do not rely on human credentials, though mine too are significant. If someone thinks he has good reasons to put confidence in human credentials, I have more. I was circumcised on the eighth day from the people of Israel and the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. I lived according to the law as a Pharisee. In my zeal for God, I persecuted the church. According to the righteousness stipulated in the law, I was blameless. But these assets I have come to regard as liabilities because of Christ. More than that, I now regard all things as liabilities compared to the far greater value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Indeed, I regard them as dung, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not because I have my own righteousness derived from the law, but because I have the righteousness that comes by way of Christ's faithfulness, a righteousness from God that is in fact based on Christ's faithfulness. My aim is to know him, to experience the power of his resurrection, to share in his sufferings and to be like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained this, that is, I have not already been perfected, but I strive to lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus also laid hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have attained this. Instead, I am single-minded, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching out for the things that are ahead. With this goal in mind, I strive toward the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let those of us who are perfect embrace this point of view. If you think otherwise, God will reveal to you the error of your ways. Nevertheless, let us live up to the standard that we have already attained. Be imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and watch carefully those who are living this way, just as you have us as an example. For many live about whom I have often told you, and now with tears I tell you that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, they exult in their shame, and they think about earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we also await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform these humble bodies of ours into the likeness of his glorious body by means of that power by which he is able to subject all things to himself. God, I hope one day to to meet Paul. I bet he has a great sense of humor. I love how he uh, writes these letters when he's talking about, therefore let those of us who are perfect embrace this point of view. Um, and he's referring to the fact that if you think you're perfect, you don't know anything because you're probably way less perfect than you could have ever possibly thought you were. <laughs> Um, and I think about that a lot in my world, how last year I thought I had this amazing relationship with you. And since I had graduated from seminary, I knew all this stuff about you and the Bible and the history when, when you walked the earth and before you walked the earth. And boy, I just thought I knew everything. Just like Paul says, I, I knew everything. I was obedient to the law down to the very last letter. I... I was the epitome of perfect. And then this year, having the honor of doing and the blessing of doing daily video Bible and just truly being humbled that I don't know anything about you and having this awesome word being tucked into my heart for hours and hours each day just makes me realize how little I, I knew last year when I thought I knew everything. And I have no doubt that I'll look back a year from now and go, oh my goodness, you didn't know anything. You, you studied the Bible for a few hours every single day and, and you still don't know everything. Um, 
and you probably know very little. But God, I, I just want to keep striving very hard. I keep wanting to strive to be perfect. I know here on earth I will never get there. But each choice of sin makes me so frustrated. And I know it's me choosing. It's not like I can blame somebody else. Just feels like it disintegrates our relationship when I, I choose sin. And, and each time I make it all about me rather than about you, then, then that takes away part of that. And I just want to keep working harder and harder so that honestly every year I am humbled by how little I do know about you. So that I can, I can work another year harder at learning more about you and more about your word and, and falling in love deeper into the relationship that we have. I want my life to always reflect you. That is the best way I know how to honor you here on earth for giving me all that you've given me. Paul even says, uh, our citizenship is in heaven. That the things of this world are not the things that we need to be worrying about. We need to worry about the fact that God put us here. And he put us here for a reason. And God, I know that that reason is to glorify you. And I just ask for your strength and your guidance to help me do that. I know that I ask you repeatedly to look at me and look at my heart and just strip away anything that doesn't belong there. Just show me and then give me the strength to change it. And every time I pray that, you always show me things I need to work on. Always. <laughs> things I need to work on. And I mean that prayer sincerely, God, that I want as much of that dead weight of that worldly view to just go away. So that all is left is that example that Paul talks about, that we're imitators of you. And I, I'll never get close to that. But I know that I am blessed and honored that I get to keep trying and figuring out what does that look like to glorify your true spirit, to glorify all the many, many facets that you are to us, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your kindness, your love, your compassion. I think sometimes, and I have no doctrinal basis for this, but I think sometimes where it talks about in the Bible that we were made in your image, I think it talks about times where we're reflecting you. I don't know necessarily that we, how we look, are made in your image, because that seems a little bit odd that that would happen, but, um, but I do believe that we are made in your image in the sense that we are truly your reflection. That when we show love to other people, we are your image. That when we show kindness to somebody else, we are your image. When we put others before ourselves, we are your image. And to me, that, that particular reading in the Bible seems to make more sense when we are every day becoming more and more like the people you created us to be, which are people who glorify you, which are people who reflect you, which are people who tell other people about you. God, help me today to, to learn one more thing about you, to love you just that much more. And God, please let, let my life today be what you need it to be, not what I need it to be. In your son's name I pray. Amen.